In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the iFlight Sucks X F4 flight controller from iFlight. Now, what we're looking at today is a toothpick flight controller stack. And what a stack means is basically the flight controller and ESC. However, with this combo, you also get a 200 milliwatt video transmitter. And what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover its overall specs, how it fits in the market, and also the connection guide if you didn't know how to connect this. Now, some more specs on the flight controller. What it's rocking is an STM F4 microcontroller unit. And the input voltage is 2 to 4S, which is great. And it's using the MPU 6000 gyro. We also do have the OSD and also 8 megabytes of flash memory and a pretty strong regulator. We got a 5 volt 2.5 amp continuous current beefy regulator, which is needed because usually everything on a toothpick is 5 volts. For example, the video transmitter, the camera, the receiver, everything is 5 volts. So you need a pretty beefy regulator in order to handle everything. Now for the ESC, we're using 8, 4 and 1 15 amp ESC and everything is 16 by 16, which means the mounting hole solution is 16 by 16. Also the ESC's input voltage is 2 to 4 S LiPo, which is great. And the maximum protocol we could use is DSHOT 600. Now for the video transmitter, we get a 5.8 gigahertz, 200 milliwatt VTX, with the ability to choose the power setting from pit mode 25 100 and 200 milliwatts the antenna interface is an ipex so with that being said let's go ahead and get started So something I really like about this stack is the ease of installation. They've basically made everything super simple for you and you only got to solder just a couple things. For example, the XT30, the low ESR capacitor and your receiver. The camera, they even provided you with a wire, which will go directly to that connector and go into your camera. Now, the way all these three components talk with each other is via pins. I know some people don't really like the pins, but this is how they've done it. They also have everything soft mounted. As you can tell, it comes out of the box soft mounted on every single component with metal screws ready to go for the complete stacks. So that's something great out of the box here. Now, the connection to the receiver might be a bit confusing because we have two R pads. So now let's just discuss how we would go about connecting a receiver, whether it's FlySky iBus or FRSky SBus or even the TBS Crossfire. So we want to take a look at these pads here. And the first thing is power. So the last one here would be ground. The next one is 5 volt. So with these two pads, we're basically done with the power for whatever it is, an iBus or an SBus receiver. Next thing we have is something called NR2 and R2. Now, both of these are the RX2 pads, which is basically UART. Now, the NR2 is the inverted pad, which where your FR Sky S bus would go. So it would go to the third one up here if you're running S bus. If you're using iBus or something else, then you'd want to go to the normal R2 pad right here. And then above that, we have the T2 pad. So if you're using the TBS Crossfire, you would want to use the R2 and the T2 right here. And obviously, we got the power from the bottom here. Now, if you're using Spectrum and you needed 3.3 volts, instead of putting your 5 volt wire here or your red wire here, you would actually set that up there. So that's really nice that they even thought about that. Next, if you wanted to connect LEDs, then you would go right here. This is the LED signal pin. So keep that in mind. And you needed power, obviously, for these LEDs. So you would take your red wire 5 volt here and your black wire ground right there. Next, if you wanted to connect a buzzer, this is very important here. What you want to do is you want to grab the negative side of your buzzer and install it right on this pad right here. Don't install it to ground. That's where you want to install it. And then the next, you want to give it five volts, which would go right here. So obviously, if you had LED and buzzer, then you're going to want to put those five volt wires together and solder them on that same pad. Now, for the video transmitter connection and also the ESC connection, there's really nothing else to do other than connect them together. As you can tell, they have the pins set up right there and you will be good to go into that perspective however the camera which i really like it's a really nice small addition here they give you the correct cable that'll fit 99 percent of all cameras out there so you could just stick that there and stick this in your camera and you're good to go whatever camera you have whether it's a run cam split or a normal run cam or a normal fox here and this is a really really nice way to introduce more people and plus you know the price is 50 dollars, which is insane you get all of this for 50 bucks and then again you know it's winter season and this is the type of things you're going to be looking into getting especially myself here now just a side note for the xt30 if you didn't know how to connect this what you want to do is you want to look for the positive side which is right there you can see that plus and that's where your red wire would go so that would be soldered right there and the black wire would be soldered over there. However, I also do highly recommend you add the low ESR capacitor here. 
uh, because it'll, you know, sometimes you can get some weird oscillations or weird vibrations that you'll never be able to tune out. And it would be due to electrical noise down in your system, touching the gyro and making it think it's doing something that it's actually not. So keep that in mind. Also, something very important to point out here, which I forgot earlier, is the filtration on the 16 by 16 ESC is actually really, really great here. I haven't seen many 16 by 16 ESCs with great filtration. We see that they were able to jam in as many capacitors as they possibly could, which is something really nice as well. And obviously you have your connectors for your motors. And if you didn't want that, you could just solder down here. So it's just up to you. So at the end of the day, it's just completely up to you. And well, that's it guys. Everything's linked down below. Go ahead and check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And also come join my Patreon. You get access to my secret shop. You support the channel. And I do a ton, ton of giveaways. Last month I gave away like 12 things or 11. And uh, you can just go to my Patreon and check out the things I give out. I give out premium stuff. This will probably be up for a giveaway as well. And um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.